So quick and quick and dirty, we're going to try to build these things up. I wanted to point out the uh, the advantage and the disadvantages of strokes, right? So strokes can be adjusted. It's the outline. You can use different thicknesses of the stroke. But for building it up initially, I just want to turn all the strokes off. So as I build these new vector shapes, I want to make sure those strokes are turned off. And you do that by clicking on it. and looking for the appearance properties of it. Like you can see them right there. I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it here. Okay, so I'm just going to start from my yellow circle here, and then I'm just going to make a duplicate of it. I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to make it smaller and hold down Shift to, to distort and stretch it. And it's going to give me a little black outline, even though there is no stroke on it, just while I'm on that layer so I can see the edges of the shape, which is especially helpful if both shapes are the same color right now. So I might make a shape like this. Try to get that top arc. I'm holding down Shift and Option when I want to preserve it. So I've got kind of that top arc. I'm going to tuck that in. This is all using Command T. Right? And then I'm going to right click within the transform box and play with warp to make a more complex shape to tug this bottom edge up. Tug these corners. If I hold down Option or Shift or Command, sometimes that will limit. I was hoping it would do something symmetrically, but it doesn't, not for this tool. And basically, I just want it to look kind of like a sad face. But I have to match it side to side. Okay, then I can hit Return. And to see what I've got, I've got to first make the color something other than what it is already there. So I might pick a color like this, and then to see what I've got, I can just turn off the guiding line, right? Anytime I want to change the color, I can just double click. If I want to make it a little bit oranger, a little bit paler, I can do that. And I can just use the Move tool to move these things around, whether it's the circle or the mouth. We're making our own emoji here, just inspired by this basic shape. So the question was, how would you go about doing something like the glasses? So the glasses are a pretty complicated shape. So I'm going to start with the already complicated shape I made by taking a a circle and then warping it into this kind of frowny face. So I'll duplicate that. Command J. It gives me a duplicate, right? Then I can hit Command T and I can hold down Shift and I can warp and I can try to get the top of the glasses in all these different ways. And I want the glasses to look kind of more like sunglasses for my outsiders. So I'm going to use that. Now here's the beauty of digital art. We're going to talk soon about the advantages and disadvantages of it. One great advantage is it makes perfect copies. So I can make a duplicate Command J of that. Then I can hit Command T to transform that duplicate. Then I can right click inside and say flip horizontal to flip that. And then I can hold down shift while I move it to the side, which will lock it on the same axis, you know, so it's perfectly placed. And so digital art makes symmetrical design pretty easy because you can make perfect copies and mirror images just like that. Hit return. What do I have so far? I have that to start my glasses. Now, if I make a duplicate of this, again, 
I can Command T, right click, and I can flip it vertically. Right? And then I can do things like, let's try just scaling it to get that bottom curve. And then right clicking and warping it. to try to get the shape of the bottom of these sunglasses that I'm going to do. And tuck in the corner, tighten them up. And I always think of warping like rolling out dough as you kind of push it and pull it on one side, it's going to do things to the other parts of it. So you're just kind of working the whole thing all at once. Now, there's only so much you can do with warp. So for instance, I can't build in more width right there, but I can always overlap that with another shape later. So right now I'm just trying to get that bottom of the glasses. And again, try not to be a perfectionist. Seeing what's possible. You'll be surprised that once you've built vectors for yourself and you start seeing logo designs and emojis and, and flat graphics all over the place, you'll notice all the mistakes in them. <laughs> It's hard to make a perfect vector. And usually the average corporate logo in America costs $100,000 for the design firm to initially design it. And that's because to make a perfect vector and a perfect design goes through so many different versions. It takes so long to kind of clean it up to that level. And obviously we're not spending nine months on this. I'm also going to tighten up the top a little bit and kind of place it about there. And then I feel like I need something in here for the glasses. So this is what I have so far. So I'm going to make another duplicate of this. It's just how I'm thinking about it. I'm going to turn it on its side, shrink it down. There's a lot of reuse of shapes in vector design. You'll see the same shapes recycled and reused a lot and it actually gives kind of a repetition and a rhythm to the designs which is helpful. And then I can warp it and I can fill that little gap there between. I might even just make another duplicate of this, transform it, and just warp it, well, maybe before I warp it, just scale it to give me a nicer shape on the inside of the glasses. You'll see what I mean. So just overlapping shapes and then warping it. so that these corners look a little bit more considered. All right, so now this is what I have for one side of glasses. If I'm really picky, I can keep going. I'm trying not to be so picky this semester. but I can clean up that corner too by warping another one. I guess we can call these, these shapes sausages. So it's easy to make a little sausage tool to help you. I can do that. I can Command T, or rather Command J, Command T, and then flip it horizontally and use that same sausage to round out this corner. Then if I don't like this bottom, I can always warp that again. Vectors, you can always 
keep working with and the pixels will always stay clean. You can keep changing their colors, keep changing their position. They'll always stay clean. That is the great advantage of them. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so that's a nice shape. Maybe you find out through this class you just want to be a sunglass designer. And actually, almost everything product related is designed digitally first now, whether it's through like an AutoCAD or some other digital imaging before it's ever prototyped. It just saves a lot of money and it allows you a lot more versatility in your design choices. From cars to toothbrushes. All right, so. That's a nice kind of sunglass frame. So just like I did it with this kind of top of the sunglass or the eyebrow, I'll keep that shape in case I might want to use it. This time, I have a whole bunch of layers that are creating that, and I want to select all of them. So just like we did with the line art, I'm going to hold down Shift and select the whole slew of them. One other way I can do that is to turn off the other layers that overlap it, and then with the move tool, instead of just clicking, I can draw a box around the ones I want to select. And you see it will select this whole range of vector shapes, which then allows me to duplicate with Command J that whole range of vector shapes, which then allows me to Command T, you can see how they're all overlapping, to flip horizontally that whole group of vector shapes, which is a nice way just to make that perfectly horizontal, but I don't want it to be perfectly horizontal. And then, while it's still selected, I can hold down Shift and move that over to the other side to get those glasses. And I actually prefer this design where it's not horns coming out of the side, because these are supposed to be cool 50 street gang glasses. Now, what can I use this for? I can use this. I'll make another duplicate of it because it will be helpful, the little sausage shape. And I'm going to use it as the connector between the glasses. Command T, hold down Shift, and just squeeze it. I'll hold down Shift and Option to squeeze it from the middle if I want to warp it. I can do that and get a little bridge and maybe shift it with the move tool just using the arrow keys to center it. All right, so that's what I've got so far. Let me get some of these weird eyeballs. So I'm going to use the circle tool, which is all I've used so far. I'm going to hold down shift, make a big eyeball. Going to change its color to white. And I'm then going to, just to show you that this is like cutouts of paper, I'm going to move that eyeball behind the glasses just by dragging and dropping. A nice uh, shortcut for this is to use Command Left Bracket. Command Left Bracket will move a layer selection down through your layers. So you can actually see it moving through these cuts, cutouts of paper. Then on top of that, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to fill it with black. Black and white, very easy on the color selector to find. Hold down Shift and Option. Shrink it lower so it becomes the pupil. Kind of move it where I want. Does it match my guide? No, it's lower in my guide, so maybe I'll put it there. And then, in order to um, match the inspiration a little bit, I'm going to do another white shape, but this time I'm just going to do a white rectangle. I want to show you these different shape tools. Okay, first it's black, but you see it's behind the glasses, which are brown. So let me change that into white. 